Hey, Slick Talkers, thank you so much for tuning into this podcast, and I know that if you love this show, you'll also love my morning show called Good Morning Hospitality with my co-hosts Michael Golden and Brandy Canale as we spend 30 minutes every Monday morning to dive into the industry's top latest news and trending topics. So go check it out on wherever you find your podcasts at Good Morning Hospitality, and you can live stream with us on Monday mornings on LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook, and of course, YouTube. Now, I hope you enjoy this episode. You take care of your owners. You take care of your properties. Uh, the guests are going to come back and those owners are going to talk to other owners. And, you know, so that's that's kind of just been my focus is just taking care of stuff and being involved in you know, if you've got any sort of local activities, you know, being out there, being present, that's just huge. It, it's you can't look at advertising as a short term goal. Welcome to Slick Talk, the hospitality podcast where we discuss all things hospitality, hotels and business. You can find us online at slicktalkthepodcast.com and on every podcast listening platform. In hotels and vacation rentals, the top complaints or issues are noise, garbage, and parking. I may not be able to solve all of your parking and garbage problems, but I could definitely help with your noise problems. And that actually might just help your garbage and parking problems too. So NoiseAware is the only 100% privacy safe noise monitoring solution that property managers and owners can use in order to ensure they avoid parties and other issues happening at their property. You won't get notified when a plate breaks. But if you have a little quiet get together that kind of gets out of hand like this, then NoiseAware will give you the peace of mind to ensure that you and your property, and of course, your profits are protected. So use my code SLICKTALK20 to get 20% off of all noise monitoring devices and focus on the other important things that help you run your business. Now, thank you for checking out Slick Talk, the hospitality podcast. Get back to the episode. and Don't forget to check out Noise Aware while you're listening. All right, everybody. Welcome back to another great episode of Slick Talk, the hospitality podcast. And I'm your host, Will Slickers. And today we have an amazing guest who just brings a, like, I guess a breeze of, or a, what is it, a uh Breath of fresh air. Is that what you call it? Yeah, that phrase. Brittany Blackman from Breathe Easy Rentals out in Florida. So I'm so excited to have you. Uh, we got to meet briefly uh, on Breezeway's Elevate conference, I believe. Yeah, it was Elevate. And uh, I was just like, man, I got to have her on the show. And so here we are finally uh, a couple months later. And I know you've been busy and I've been busy. So it's so great to have you, Brittany. How are you? I'm good. Good morning. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. And yeah, I'm, I'm excited to chat with you further today. Yeah, let's geek out a little bit about vacation rentals. I'm so pumped. Um, well, let's just jump in. You have a really cool story. And what caught my attention at first with uh, with the Breezeway Conference was that you started Breathe Easy Vacation Rentals in the middle or in, let's say the beginning of a worldwide pandemic. So uh, to me, that just like automatically catches my eye because, well, you know, who would be crazy enough to do that? And it's you and it's so cool. So uh, I want to hear your story and let's just jump right in from the beginning. Yeah, no, that's awesome. And uh, yes, crazy is, is the good best <laughs> definition for that. Um, so I was operations manager at a local company for nine, nine and a half years and uh, always saw myself becoming a bigger part of the company, um, you know, becoming an owner and, and having that, you know, responsibility and, and weight on the shoulders. And um, it was kind of crazy because, you know, when COVID hit, it was like this emotional shake to everybody. And it's like, are you happy? What are you doing with your life? You're stuck in your house with your family. You can't go anywhere. Um, like you really had to sit there and go like, am I happy? What's, what's right? What's, what's not. And, um, 
I, uh, I hit it one last time to try to attempt to buy the uh, company that I worked for. And, um, needless to say, it did not work out. And so, uh, again, I, I knew what road I wanted to start heading down. So from there, I turned around and started building everything from scratch. And, um, it was September of 2020 when I left and, you know, started out, we, uh, started with our rentals in January of this year and, Mm -hmm. It was definitely frightening because, yes, you know, you're starting a a business in a pandemic, but I just I love the industry so much. And I just really felt like tourism is just one of those things in our world that's never going to go away. Mm hundred percent. I couldn't agree more. And I'm kind of curious just to know from what were you doing before you got into vacation rentals? Was there any hospitality correlation prior to or did you kind of stumble into vacation rentals through that company first and then just kind of fell in love from there? Uh, so I've always been involved in hospitality from a big level. Like um, I grew up in restaurants. I did retail. Uh, when I'm I'm originally from Georgia, I moved to Florida 11, 12 years ago, um, and I started doing sales down here. And so from that, um, I used to run run back and forth on the harbor in Destin, taking pictures of all the fishing boats when they came in. Mm -hmm. And I'd have to sell fishing pictures to the people on the boats. And that was like super fun, but definitely not something I wanted to do the rest (laughs) of my life. Um, So when I left from there, that's when I wound up finding a reservations position at a vacation rental company. And I didn't know what a vacation rental was. We definitely didn't have those in, or I didn't think we had them in (laughs) North Georgia time but um you know that's kind of was my first step into vacation rentals and then it's just been a crazy addiction since then that's a good way to describe it crazy addiction since then I, i feel the same way like yeah it's very addictive once you find the inner workings and you just get one little piece of it and you're like i want more i want more i want more i want more so totally understandable um i guess my next question to you then would be your biggest takeaways from doing operations at that previous company to then just starting breathe easy one i love the name of breathe easy i love the brand i think breathe easy is such a great way to describe what we try to accomplish as vacation rental managers um, and operators we want our guests to have a breath of fresh air we want them to relax and to to really just understand that we're here to take care of them Um, and so i guess for you starting this company Let's just dive into like the biggest takeaways that you had from your previous experience that you brought to what you've created now. Yeah, um, I think one of the biggest things I learned was just setting processes, or I should say the importance of setting processes um, and always working on those processes if they need to change you know you can't just be stale and well we did this you know this way 10 years ago Mm -hmm. so it has to work like there might be one thing in your business you can do that way but that's probably it um you know so that was one of the biggest things especially as you grow you know there's a difference in operating five rentals versus 100 115 like when i left um you know so that was the biggest thing i knew that you know i didn't have a team to rely on at the beginning it was me doing 100 everything so i had to have processes so i could be efficient um and then you know it it honestly gave me like a dive into figuring out what all could go wrong so that way i as i knew i was going to be building a team i could try to set those barriers up so people would make mistakes as much um, if I kind of knew what could happen in some things. So the organization and the processes was honestly just one of the biggest things. And then, you know, at the end of the day, um, here in Destin, it's a very um, competitive market. There's like 6,000 rental managers here, I think. Um, And so you have to have that communication with the owners. Um, you know, there's some owners who never come to their properties and they don't care. They just want rental income. That's not what I wanted. I wanted owners who actually cared about the breathe easy experience, um, that care about their properties and what they provide to the guests. And so, you know, with that, they expect a lot of communication from me. They want their property kept well and organized. And if there's issues, communicate with them. So, so, you know, I think those were two of the biggest, biggest things that I stepped into this knowing, okay, I've got to get processes set up so I can be efficient and I've got to make sure I 
picked my market of owners and then how do I communicate and keep those relationships with them? hundred percent. I love that you said processes because I'm a big fan of this. Uh, I think this is super key. When we're talking about all these, um, I don't know if you call them COVID preneurs or COVID influencers or whatever you want to call them, but they kind of just popped out of the woodworks and, you know, we can make you, or I can show you how to make a million dollars on Airbnb. And that's like their, their go-to saying, right? But they're not really caring about the processes and systems. They're not really caring about the guest experience. They're really just doing that old heads and beds model, trying to not really caring about the community they're in, whether it's in a multifamily building or in a, in a neighborhood. And uh, uh, the fact that you intentionally set up the processes to affect the, the, breathe, the breathe easy experience and then also the owner avatar or owner uh, characteristics that you really want to portray and, and have involved super key. Like a lot of people don't even think about that stuff um, until they get a bad owner that they have to work for. And then they're realizing, Oh, I don't want this. <laughs> so that's really, really good. Really good, smart uh, starting point. But I want to know from your now. So like creating breathe easy after leaving the company, you, so when did you, did you start out with inventory right out the right out the gate or did you have um, a kind of a a resting period to really set up your internal ops and everything else that you're creating, you know, brand and website and all that other stuff? Um, so I had about three months of downtime. Uh, we didn't start taking on, I had, contracts in place but we didn't start renting out until january one at the gotcha. earliest so gotcha. um i had basically three months and what i'd been working on prior you know to get everything up and running in the background um, to get the rental agreements and the owner contracts you know created and all of that stuff so i did have a little downtime um not as much as i probably probably should have really taken like six months <laughs> off to just like breathe a little bit but yeah that addiction thing kicked in <laughs> and uh, I was ready to start January one. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Well, so can you tell, so I know um, I'm a big fan of not only good processes and systems, but technology. So was this a big, like, was this a big Im- implementation for you going into this? Like knowing like you needed to have good tech. Did you look at that as a, a big key factor for breathe easy as a brand or as an experience for your owners and guests as a whole or Um, Was that something that kind of came in later? Uh, No, technology was definitely at the forefront. You know, again, I was a one-man band, um, so I knew that me being able to be efficient, it was – you got to pay for it somewhere. You either pay for it in your time or you pay for it in the software. Um, I knew that time was money to me. So I was willing to pay for the software. Uh, I did spend months and months digging into software, found some really good ones, um, uh, found some not awesome ones. Um, I have been a user of Escapia before. And so I wound up going with Escapia again. Um, first off, they do have a, a good product. They're building out a lot of good things to stay competitive. Um, but at the end of the day, the biggest reason was because I knew the system, I wasn't going to have a learning curve. I was not going to have any downtime. You know, the last thing you want to do is be a startup business trying to figure out software on top of it. Yeah. And then, and, you know, owners are going, well, why don't I have my owner statement or why does my calendar show it's blocked and it's open? And like, those are some hard questions and, um, I didn't want to have to answer them. So, you know, I was willing to pay for Escapia because like I said, I just, I knew it. Um, so it was big for me on the software and then, um, breezeway for all my operations, how I keep everything organized for the properties, a hundred percent in breezeway, uh, with the cleaners, vendors, you know, notation, inventory, everything. Um, and then I had touch day for, um, all of my guest communication for my guidebooks and, you know, I always joked around that like touch day was one of my first employees because <laughs> I could put those commonly asked questions in there. And of course people ask this similar questions over and over and over. And I just direct them to the guidebook or send yeah. them a screenshot. If I'm feeling happy that day. Um, you know, it, again, just efficient instead of me typing out 5,000 answers and, you know, 
having paper service orders getting lost or what did that chair look like? You know, just having all of that software um, was just the biggest leap forward that I needed. And I I knew that owners were going to be coming with me and I needed them to feel comfortable that they weren't going to come to a lesser product because, of course, I don't want to lower my rates. Um, (laughs) So I have to provide at least a, a similar, if not better, experience for owners to be worth it for them to move. For sure. No, I, I love that. And can you just jump into it? I, I love hearing owners and founders that have created their own brand uh, kind of talk about the standard. You know, like for us, we have our, our own company standard. Uh, we based a lot of it off of Marriott from my, my previous hotel background. Um, but what's the breathe easy standard when, you know, when you're taking on a new property, what are the like go to things that you guys are like, all right, you need X amount of linen and all this other stuff. Like, do you have a certain standard that you guys create for your home experience with your guests and owners? Yeah. Um, so, you know, it goes back to what kind of owners do you want? Um, sometimes you don't know that till after you work with them, what kind of owners they are. Um, so having that, you know, front and center is important. Um, seeing their properties is my number two step. You know, if it's completely outdated, we say you have to completely remodel or it's not coming on. Um, because at the end of the day, that guest experience, I want them to come in and breathe easy. I don't want them coming in, seeing 10 year old stained carpet. And we're just, our, our, um, area here again, insanely competitive. You just can't do that anymore. Um, I just don't want that attached to the name. I want high end. I want beautiful, clean, um, you know, organized, uh, properties. And, um, once you, you know, get past the owner and the property, you know, going into the actual unit, then um, we do standardize all of our linens and terry. Um, so that way I don't have to replace an owner's bedspread that yeah. God only knows where it went, like the sock <laughs> and the dryer. Yeah. Um, you know, so we standardize that and A, from a cleanliness standpoint, everything that a guest touches gets washed and laundered between every stay. We don't do it the quote unquote cheap way and triple sheet. It all goes every single time. Um, and then from the second point, just standardization. Like I knew that I was going to be growing to 25, 30, whatever my max, you know, number is. And with that, again, comes organization in your processes. And mm-hmm. when you're trying to track pillows and comforters and stuff like that and blankets, um, it's just impossible. So we, we have that standardized and then we have inventory lists. Um, We also provide checklists to our owners of maybe extra things they want to provide. Like maybe they want to have phone chargers and Mm -hmm. uh, flashlights, um, you know, just different little things that, you know, can really add to a guest experience if a guest or an owner wants to add those things. For sure. I love that. I love it so much. It's so smart. Like, yeah. You just got to put it in front of them sometimes because they can't think about the the experience on like the guest side. Um, and that's what we always try to do with our owners is, you know, like, OK, what is a guest getting experience? I know you like this because it was a vacation home for you. But when a guest walks in, are they going to see this and be like, oh, I wish I had you know a phone charger next to the nightstand or something like that? Um, no, that's super smart. I love that. Uh, now, I want to get on a personal note just from going from and then I quote unquote, I'm saying this in a totally nice way, like quote unquote employee to then now an owner founder. What has been the biggest shift for you in, in mindset and your daily life? You know, what's going on behind the scenes with Brittany? Um, you know, are you breathing easy? What's the, what's the overall experience been like for, for you to become an entrepreneur? So, um, in such a crazy time, like just with COVID and not only is the vacation rental world so unique and operationally heavy, um, but, you know, becoming a, an, a, an owner and a, and a founder is so much more different than uh, an employee. And I think you and I both can know that. Um, and anyone listening can know that, too. But what's it been like for you just shifting that mindset, shifting that, um, taking that vision and executing on it? Like, that's another beast in itself. So I'm just kind of curious to hear a little bit more on your, your personal journey. Yeah, uh, it's a great question that I don't think a lot of people do talk about. Um there are a lot of days that I have to remind myself to breathe easy. It's uh, my husband and I literally joke about it and we're like, we're not breathing easy. <laughs> um, so it, it's very true. Um, it, if just to be super blunt with you, it's an emotional roller coaster. Um, I definitely, I, 
I have a ginormous heart, so I take things personally anyways. Um, and now that it's my baby, I like really take things personally. Uh, we got our first not five star review and my husband and I were like freaking out about it. Um, so that's, that's been one thing is it that emotional attachment is very different. Um, and yeah, I mean, it's just, you know, you have good days, you have bad days and it's just, I think the hardest thing I've always just worked, I hate to say it this way, but like I've always worked like I've owned it, mm -hmm. you know, like there were many people who at my previous company thought I owned it and yeah. they had, had no idea I didn't um, because that's just how I was raised. I had amazing parents that instilled that in me. So like that part didn't really change because I just always worked that way. But, um, you know, I think just not having a team, you know, I don't have somebody else to go order the inventory. I don't have anybody else to go run to Walmart and get something when it breaks. And, you know, so you're sitting there working your average day and then stuff's breaking and this and that, and people are calling and, um, you know, it's just, it, it's a lot. And like I said, there's, there's some bad days. Thank goodness. The good days out far outweigh the bad. Um, but you know, it's just, you just, you kind of, I will say you kind of carry it the pride a little bit more because it's, it's like your baby. Yeah. Um, it's something you've created. And, you know, especially like I've been very hands on from creating, you know, the logo. I knew exactly what I wanted from building out the website. Um, you know, I had a vision with that. And um, of course, people helped me along the way with that stuff. But I was still very involved in all of those things. So it's just that emotional attachment, I think, is is the biggest thing. And sometimes you got to figure out when to, of course, turn that off and yeah. rest. <laughs> yeah. Hey, I hope you guys are enjoying this episode. And I wanted to drop in quickly to let you know that our partners at Jetstream have some of the best in class technology that sits at the heart of the guest experience with a focus on generating revenue for your property assets. With their platform, your property gets the best in class tech and integrations to remote access guest screening, booking protection, and payment processing. Better yet, their team does all of the hard work of 24-7 guest communication and content creation. So go ahead, click the link in the show notes so you can jump on board today and take advantage of their professional hospitality team. Now, we're back to the episode. No, I, I, I'm glad that you said that part of the, because the resting part is uh, some, I'd like, I was recently talking to a couple of other people and it's just, I think we forget so often as founders or entrepreneurs that, um, you know, like we, we don't celebrate the wins often enough. Like we, we don't, or we don't take enough time. Like we celebrate for five seconds. Like, Oh, that was really great. Good job guys. And then you're on to the next thing. Um, and you don't really take the moments like to reflect on that. And we, you know, recently was having a moment. I was like, I, I need to reflect more. I need to, I need to sit back and kind of just, like maybe just pause, just be still for a second. Um, and so I'm kind of curious cause with that question, it always brings up, um, a conversation I had with a friend out in, out in London, who's a great guy, been involved in many businesses in the food industry, but he always goes, you know, Will, what gives you energy, right? Like what, like, obviously we're going to have to do things in life, uh, in general, um, that don't give us energy. I do not like having to go online to pay my rent and my bills and doing all these other things or, uh, maybe do errands and groceries or sometimes even cook food. Uh, it doesn't give me energy because I want to focus on other things. But for you, Brittany, what do you, what do you look at? Like what anchors you in order to give you energy? Like where do you draw that from when it comes to running your business? Is it the guest experience? Is it working with a team now that you're building uh, your inventory or what's, what's, where's your energy draw from? Um, I think it's, it comes from several sources, you know, there is nothing, you know, more exciting than seeing a guest review that, you know, like we got called the Chick-fil-A of vacation rentals. <laughs> and I was like, oh my gosh, that's huge. Y'all <laughs> like that. That one blew me away. Um, so that was my top favorite so far. But, you know, just seeing the guest reviews and knowing that these guests have hectic, insane lives, but they can come here and breathe easy and relax and have a good vacation. Like that just makes it worth it. You know, you're like, yeah, we did it. We, yeah. we let them go off. And, um, you know, from the owner's side, um, nothing makes me happier than another owner telling an owner about me and, you know, getting that signed on. That's, 
that right there is just the proof in the pudding. When they say, hey, we came in and we didn't have to work this time and we told so-and-so about you, I'm like, nailed it. Um <laughs> You know, and and from the employees, you know, I I try to share those reviews with them. If they do something, you know, they're the ninjas behind the scenes. So I try to make sure they see that stuff. And my biggest thing is for them not to be stressed out. That's why that's why I'm get paid the big bucks, even though I don't get paid the big bucks. (laughs) I just say that phrase, Um, you know, and then at the end of the day, I love to travel. Um, Unfortunately, that requires money. So that, you know, when there's a stint of really hard days and weeks, it's like this reminder of Brittany, you've got to make money um, and you're not just an employee. Mm -hmm. You know, you've got this entrepreneurial mind. You've got this creative mind. Push forward, you know, work your rear end off and go travel and go do things and create your own experiences. And I literally have to tell myself that many times. Um, But I think those four things all kind of stream into what keeps me going every day and waking up and happy and all of that. For sure. Well, I don't know what to like title this episode anymore. I was gonna say addicted to vacation rentals, but now I'm like tempted to be the Chick Fil A of vacation rentals. I can't tell. Uh, there's two good options. So whenever uh, audience members are listening to this podcast, whatever the title is, just know that's the one I settled for because it's so good. There's two great options. We might have to do a part two so I can use the other one. Maybe I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's so awesome though, and I I love that you just kind of because. It's very rare. I would say there's a lot of entrepreneurs or a lot of people that start a business. They have that vision. They don't execute it on it right. So they don't get to see it live out versus what you just kind of described was you had that vision. You executed it right, whether there was bumps along the way, which I'm sure there were. Uh, but at the end of the day, there you saw that breathe easy experience lived out. And I think there's nothing better. There's no payday. There's no payout from a vacation rental that would fulfill that feeling that you got from that experience of seeing that live. Uh, there's just something about the vision being executed on and seen and experienced the way that you intended it to be. Um, and I don't think like, it's so funny. I'm pretty sure you get this all the time too. And you have to tell me if I'm wrong, but when you tell people what you do for a living, you're like, I'm a vacation rental manager. They're like, what's that? And then you're like Airbnb and they're like, Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah I get that. Um, but they don't really fully understand like it's hospitality. It's, a lot of moving pieces. It's a lot of technology. It's a lot of communication. Um, there's so much behind the scenes. And I, I like that you described your, your employees as the ninjas behind the scenes uh, because it's so true, but not a lot of people see the work that goes into it. So yeah, I think you sharing that story or just seeing that vision of the breathe easy experience being lived out through your guests uh, is rare. It's rare, really rare. Like a lot of entrepreneurs don't get to that point. Um, so I just think that's what makes your story so fun and exciting because not only is it like super crazy just to do it in the beginning of, or in the yeah beginning, I can't even tell when COVID started or when it's even, yeah, I'm so behind on my timeline, but you know, what I'm trying to say I'm rambling on, but long story short, I think you seeing that vision is just one huge accomplishment. And I want to give you a big kudos on that because, um, yeah, not many get to see that that day. So really good stuff. Thanks. Of course. Well, I'm curious to know from. Now, okay, so let's get back into the geeky stuff of like growing a business and vacation rentals and all that stuff. So now that you're getting you're getting properties, uh, you got contracts. And now talk to us about your, you know, obviously we met through Breezeway. So Breezeway is a big part of your guys' operations. How are you guys now scaling and growing? Um, you know, whether it's cleaning, maintenance, inventory in general. Um, what, what's been the biggest, uh, learning curve to get new inventory, especially in a competitive market like Destin? Um, I, 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 we have a property now in Orlando, which is already really competitive because it's like right next to Disney world. And, uh, so I'm curious to know for you with Destin being, you know, 6,000 rentals and rent or property managers, um, what's the, what's the overall like scale operational growth in that competitive market like for you? Um, well, I, took a little different route with things and I wanted to grow based on referrals. Um, so we have, I believe it's 18 contracts now. Um, they're 100% referral based. Um, it was, 
connecting with other property managers in the area because they're established, you know, they don't, um, they don't necessarily want to take on everything either. They've got their own model, you know, of the perfect owner, perfect property. Um, so, you know, it, it wasn't, it wasn't something that just happened overnight. You sure. know, I mean, I've been networking, I've been doing this for 10 years. I was out in, in the public and talking to people and building relationships. And so I honestly, I don't think I could have ever left. And I don't think I could have ever started out so successfully if it wasn't for networking with mm-hmm. people. Um, you know, so again, I'm at this point, I'm a hundred percent just referral based. And um, other than that, you know, we send out or we will send out postcards in the fall the owners, you know, um, you know, just to have more brand recognition. I don't really expect many owners to call from them. Mm-hmm. Um, but if they at least go, Oh, what's this breathe easy. And, you know, maybe if I decide to go down more paid advertising in the future, you're not starting from scratch. So it's more a long, long-term goal, yeah. um, than the short term right now. But other than that, you know, we just been insanely blessed. I have no other words for it. Like we were just insanely blessed with the leads that were coming in, the timing that they came in. And like I said, you take care of your owners, you take care of your properties. Uh, the guests are going to come back and those owners are going to talk to other owners. And, you know, so that's, that's kind of just been my focus is just taking care of stuff and being involved in, you know, if you've got any sort of local activities, you know, being out there, being present, um, that's just huge. It's, you can't look at advertising as a short term goal or Mm -hmm. you shouldn't with stuff like this, you know, it, to me, it's, it's always the long term. like, you know, that's why, and like some of the first stuff we ever bought, like when I first got my credit card was advertising stuff. We bought shirts, hats, koozies, and we just, I mean, everywhere pinned, like they went everywhere. Mm. Um, and that was just the thing was like, you know, we weren't even renting and we we're pushing this stuff out, but I wanted the, I'm not the big companies that are around here. I don't have all of that, you know, built up customer data. So I had to get our name out as crazy as I could, as much as I could to yeah. build that brand um, recognition and over time it'll pay for itself. For sure. Well, I'm curious to know because a lot of guests, they book, you know, via a platform like Airbnb or Verbo or I don't know, whatever else. And so their their mindset coming in, if they're not either a frequent vacation rental traveler or um, if they're not even just in general a traveler, they, if they book a property on Airbnb, they think you're an Airbnb, uh, which I hate the term because it's like, no, I'm a vacation rental on Airbnb. But um, so I, I guess... For you guys, with the the brand recognition is really important on the B two B side, but on the B two C side, um, with outside of like Touch Day and your guidebooks and stuff, where how do you guys build that brand internally for the guests to recognize like, oh, this is a Breathe Easy property, uh, not an Airbnb? Or I, I'm pretty sure you still get that. I I know we do, um, but I, I'm just kind of curious. What's your your go to for building that brand recognition to the guest? Um. Yeah. So we um. Of course, anything we have has our logo on it. So we we have different goodies that we put in the unit. You know, it might be a pen and pad. Um, It could be we've done sand buckets. We've done some hats before. We've done bags. Um, So any anything that we put our or any promotional product we purchase has our brand on it. Um, you know, we have an information sheet when they first check in that discusses like emergency contact info and the address, all of that again, has our logo on it. Um, we will probably this winter do an email blitz um, and kind of put in there about, you know, the book direct movement. Um, yeah. It's one literally, I think like one of the first things on our website, you know, what is book direct? Um, so we have that, but I just, I'm like in the middle of the fence because I, I do think that guests need to be educated. So we do it lightly, but I'm not going to go to somebody and just be like, Hey, you spent $700 and you shouldn't have. Now, if they ask me, y'all yeah, tell them that. Um, mm-hmm. But you know, I'm not just going to come out because I just firmly believe at the end of the day, these people using Burbo and Airbnb, they do it because it's, they feel it's safe mm-hmm. and it's just comfortable and easy to them. So if I can provide an experience that's more comfortable and easier 
then they're going to come back to me. So like, I'm a huge texter. I'm doing five kajillion things an hour. Um, so trying to get me on the phone is just about impossible. It's like trying to talk to an alien. <laughs> um, but if you text me, I, we're on it. We're let's go. Um, so I text all of my guests and a, it helps me communicate quicker, but B, if they then save the phone number in there or go back to the text message, like I had one guest that stayed this May, they've already texted me about next year, you know? So, um, I think that's, I don't know. I just, I read a book recently and the biggest thing was like, easy. You got to make things easy for people. And if I'm not going to be easier than Airbnb and Verbo, I'm never going to win that fight. I'm not, I'm not going to waste money and resources on trying to fight it, but if I can, you know, have the text in and get, if certain guests is going to like that and they'll save my number and reach out to me that way. So, you know, again, I think some education is important, but I wouldn't just beat it into people either because, at the end of the day, they're just going to go back to Verbo anyways. <laughs> yeah. no, that's a good point. Do you think we, do you think vacation rentals or even uh, vacation rental managers underestimate the power of texting? Uh, do you think we try to overcomplicate it with, you know, communicating through our property management software or through the you know channel manager or whatever else that we, we may communicate? Uh, do you think that texting is an underutilized uh, tool? I do. Um, you know, I would just, Oh, a week or two ago, um, attended the conference in Orlando for the Florida VRMA. And um, we actually, in one of the discussions, it got brought up about texting. And we we're like, okay, well, what texting apps out there? And it was surprisingly, I think like one or two got listed that are actually like built around the functionality, you know, for vacation rentals. And I think that's going to have to change. Um, I know Breezeway has released one um, that they've been kind of building out this year. Um, and I think that's going to become, or I hope at least it becomes a lot more uh, popular in our industry, you know, because it is easy. And if guests are, you know, if they're flying and they're, you know, running through airports and this or that, or they're driving, you know, they may not answer, you know. And so if you have that text, they can at least look back at it. A lot of people don't want to check their email, yeah. you know, when they're going. So, like I said, I'm a huge texter. I absolutely love it. Um, so I, I think it's going to be growing in our industry, but I also think we're just at the baby steps with it too. For sure. For sure. And you and I, before, well, this episode will go out after the RMA International in San Antonio, but you and I are going to probably get to learn a ton of other tools and uh, maybe some tech software that we can implement to, uh, make that communication line way better. I have a hard time with texting just because I already have so many texts. Like I don't want to buy a personal and a, and a business cell phone. Like if that makes sense, I've tried that once and it was like so complicated and I would always forget one and be like, damn it, I can't, I can't do this and I can't do that. Um, but, and I already have so many text messages. Like I have text messages in my phone from like 2017 ish like i'm bad at getting rid of stuff uh so i'm like i'm always hesitant for texting because uh of the idea of like i'm also getting really bad recently with covid this last year um seeing a notification reading it and then forgetting to respond that's like my biggest uh mistakes do you have anything that you use or any kind of method that you do with like getting a text or like do you know what ones to open based off of like a little glimpse that you may get to see. I'm just kind of curious because I'm, I'm horrible at that. So um, if, uh, if you ever texted me, I probably have read the text and then responded like a day later sometimes. So yeah, that's pretty bad. Yeah, no, on a personal level, the same, like a week later, I'm like, Hey, I'm doing great. How are you? Hope you didn't. Um, so, uh, for the business though, I use just my same personal phone and tablet. Uh, I use ring central, and uh, Ring Central is an app. It's it's been awesome. It's how my business line is set up and where all the texts are. So I can actually turn it off. Not that I ever do, but if I want to turn it off and not get notifications, I can. And um, you know, it's it. You can set up like business hours and after hours to kind of have different notifications pop up for you. Um, uh, the other thing I think that's just helped me with that is just 
having like I have templates saved in my notes and my phone. So I'm not like every guest, you know, I reach out to them on arrival day. I check in with them a couple of days after. Um, so, you know, all of that's just saved in a template. So I'm just copy pasting, you know, changing their names and, you know, if it was wet outside versus a sunny day kind of stuff. So, you know, the templates are a huge thing. I definitely would not be sending all those texts one by one. Mm-hmm. Um, and I mean, other than that, you know, I'll just, if I need to hear back from somebody and I haven't, I'll just send them a quick text and, you know, Hey, just following up. Do you get my text message? And everybody has been excellent about it. I think, I think we're up to like five or 600 reservations this year and I can count um, two people who were not text Um <laughs> They wanted phone calls and I learned that. And so we did phone calls. Uh, but other than that, 498 were happy with text and did extremely well with it. So. Well, it sounds like you got yourself a little secret weapon then. Uh, we don't talk about uh, texting often and the operation side. So I think that's uh, a good tool to keep in, in the front forefront. You said that was ring central for anyone who's listening. Yes. Perfect. Awesome. Well, Brittany, uh, I would love to give you the opportunity. One, I have one final question before we close out the episode. And if you had one message to any listener on the podcast today, doesn't matter if they're an operator or a service provider or a hotel person, a restaurant person, a vacation rental person, anybody. If you had one message in the hospitality industry, uh, just from your personal experience, what would it be to anyone? Um, the hardest but most rewarding thing about our industry is that we are built on relationships. And so I say that it can be hard because you're dealing with so many different people's emotions and backgrounds, and they may have had a great day of traveling, or they could have been in a car with their four kids for 12 hours and they are not happy. (laughs) Um, You know, you, you just, and that it's from your guests, it's from your owners, um, it's from the staff, you know, the vendors and stuff you're working with yourself, whatever, you know, you, you've got so many different emotions and you can't run from it cause you got to stay hospitable the whole time and be smiling. Um, so I think I say that because I think it's something that you still have to pay attention to. You can't, you can't just get mad at everybody because they're everybody's short tempered and on short fumes these days and stuff like that. You just, you have to understand you're in hospitality. It's a relationship. And if you can turn that experience upside down, um, that's going to be the most rewarding side of it. You know, when you can calm that guest down or calm that owner down and don't look at it as an issue, but a way to, to better yourself, learn from your mistake, you know, but like I said, a lot of it comes from, you've got to understand in hospitality and, and this is, you know, restaurants, you know, it, it's literally everything retail, all of it. Like this is all built on trust and relationships. If people don't feel comfortable shopping with you or working with you, they're not going to, mm-hmm. and that's fine. Not everybody's meant to be your client. Um, but I, I think, I don't think enough people in this industry like talk about that and talk mm-hmm. about like we are relationship built. Every vendor that I work with, it's a relationship. And if they don't listen to me when I'm upset, I just get more frustrated. Um, if there's, you know, stuff that it's not working and we need, you know, I need it fixed and they don't help, I get frustrated. Same thing if I don't help my guests, you know. So, you know, it's it's just something that, you know, breathe in, breathe out, like deep breath and just realize we're all humans and hopefully they're going to go away if they're not happy. And, you know, if they are, they're here, but, you know, just, I think being aware of that and I've joked around about it before, like, I feel like we're part-time psychologists in this industry um, because we have to like psycho analyze everybody like what are they thinking right now are they mad at me are they not like what if I tell them this you know it's so just a crazy crazy part of the industry but you just you got to be aware of it and you have to be willing to handle it if you're like I said if you're going to be short fused on your side you're never going to last or you're going to ruin the company's brand you're going to create bad experiences um so it it does take a certain style person especially in vacation rentals um you know and just 
just calm down and be willing to be a psychologist. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's such a perfect uh, way to describe it. I was just thinking about it. Like the amount of times I was, when I was a front desk agent, I would be like analyzing their tone of voice and their body language and the lack of eye contact or their, their excessive amount of eye contact and yeah, all the other stuff. So it's the same way. Yeah. hundred percent psychologist slash analytical, you know, like, yeah, you have to really understand people. Um, especially you have to be very comfortable with all different types, backgrounds, religions, cultures, you know, like just totally be ready to expect the unexpected as cheesy as it is because you never know what you're going to get sometimes with people. Um, So that's great advice. Great advice. Um, Last question is the final closeout for the episode where we let every guest uh, give a shameless shout out or plug. So where can any of the listeners, obviously everything's going to be in the show notes, but where can the listeners find you? What's the best way to contact you if they have questions or if they want to even, I don't know, maybe there's an owner listening to this podcast and wants to sign up. So it'd be great. Um, yeah. So of course our company website, breathe easy rentals.com, uh, emails, Brittany, B R I T T A N Y at breathe easy rentals.com. Um, and then of course we've got Facebook, Instagram, um, barely on Pinterest, barely on LinkedIn. And, uh, when I had time, I was making videos on YouTube. And so, uh, those are real fun to watch. <laughs> um, but yeah, you can pretty much find me anywhere you need me awesome well like i said everyone i'm going to tag everything in the show notes so please check them out like subscribe follow along for the breathe easy journey i think it's an exciting one to to pay attention to Brittany. i want to say thank you so much for being on the show today it's such a pleasure and i can't wait to meet you in person this coming week in verma even though people listening now it's gonna be a couple weeks later but long story short i'll see you in a couple days Yes, I'm so excited. Thank you for the opportunity and uh, fly safely and I'll see you on Saturday, Sunday. Perfect. Thank you so much for listening. We love your support and want to provide the best we can to all our listeners. So please find us online, social media, and on Spotify, Apple Podcast, and Google Podcast. What's up, all my Slick Talkers? This episode is brought to you by my friends at Hostfully. Now, these are the days where enough is enough with managing multiple calendars for your properties in order just to make sure you don't get double booked. And not having a website for your guests to get to know your story and book direct? You can stop stressing, at least a little bit, and check out my friends at Hostfully. Hostfully was created by hosts for hosts, and they understand the importance of centralizing operations, inboxes, calendars, and of course, keeping up with the times and the industry data. You can go to hostfully.com, use my code SLICKTALK20 to get access to their digital guidebooks and their property management software. I use them as well, and I love the simplicity of their product. Now, I hope you enjoyed this episode of Slick Talk, the hospitality podcast. Now sit back and enjoy. What's up, everybody? If you've gotten this far into the episode of Slick Talk, the hospitality podcast, then you are amazing. And thank you so much for tuning in. We want to send you two places really quickly. If you can, check out the show notes and click the hospitality.fm link. Check out all of our other shows on the podcast network. And don't forget, if you have someone that you want to hear on the podcast, then fill out the guest fill out form so that way we can get them on the show. Thank you so much for tuning in, and I hope you enjoy another episode of Slick Talk, the Hospitality Podcast.